Welcome to Kinefinity.tv. Today we will talk about getting started with the Mavo LF, building the camera up, some safety and usage tips, and getting to know the user interface and menus. Kinefinity cameras follow a modular design concept, which allows them to be highly flexible and fit many different production needs, from studio setups down to mini-sized run-and-gun builds. We're going to build the camera in a basic configuration with a side grip and Kinebac W for additional connection capabilities. The Mavo allows the use of EF, PL, LPL, and E-mount lenses through the use of its own lens mount adapter system, which attach to the camera's native Kinemount. Mounting adapters are available with an internal ND filter, and iris control and lens metadata are available with compatible lenses. All of the Kinefinity lens adapters use a Cine-style mounting system, it's very important to mount EF lenses not by rotating them as on a DSLR, but by holding the lens with its red dot matching the mounts, then twisting the bayonet grip counterclockwise. This ensures a rock-solid grip on the lens with no possibility of movement. It's also recommended by the manufacturer to put the camera in suspend mode or leave it off when changing EF lenses to prevent the possibility of a short circuit between the lens contacts and the mount. You can also turn off the active mount in the menu, which is most convenient when working with fully manual lenses. The camera's base module has two video connections for the specially designed Kinemon monitors and Kina EVF. It offers a built-in HDMI connection for additional monitoring, a microphone port, a headphone port, a DC in power connector, a CTRL control connector for accessories like a handheld record trigger, and a USB 3 connector for loading LUTs and new firmware. Make sure USB sticks that you connect with the camera are formatted in a FAT or FAT32 mode. The Kinebac W adds a number of professional ports including dual 3G SDI video outputs, two phantom-powered XLR audio inputs, a sync import, an external power and communication port for lens motors and accessories, time code in and out, and two DTAP power ports. It also adds a V-mount for high-capacity batteries which are needed to take advantage of the additional power ports. You can also power the camera through Kinefinity's grip bats installed in the side grip. These are BP U30 style batteries, but it's highly recommended to use Kinefinity original batteries because Kinefinity's batteries have higher capacity. Let's talk about the basic controls and menus of the Mavo system. Keep in mind that as Kinefinity is continuously optimizing the user interface based on feedback, certain buttons and menu functions may be reassigned in future firmware releases. We're referring here to Kina OS 6.2. Once you've booted up the camera with the power button, which takes about 25 seconds to complete, you're ready to start shooting. You can use the four-way selector buttons on the side of the camera or the corresponding buttons on the camera's side grip to control essential camera settings, like shutter speed, ISO, white balance, and internal ND if you're using a mount with this feature. Double tapping each selector accesses additional settings, including resolution, frame rate, LUT, and project presets. This is a convenient way to recall preferred shooting settings that you use often. The additional buttons are the control wheel, which is used for menus and settings and to change the lens iris setting on electronic EF lenses. The center button, which turns the on-screen waveform on and off. The zoom button. Holding the zoom button on the side of the camera for three seconds locks all the buttons of the camera except record. 
Watch out for this as it can be triggered accidentally. To turn it off, hold the button for 3 seconds again. The playback button enters playback mode. You can control clips by pressing the menu button to play or pause, the left button to switch to a previous clip, and the down button to switch to the next clip. The playback button again exits playback mode. The audio button allows you to choose audio level settings. The menu button enters the main menu, which we will explore in depth in another video on this channel. On the side grip is a back button to assist in navigating menus. On the camera side only are the media and power buttons. Pressing the media button opens a small menu for either deactivating, also known as unmounting, or activating, mounting the media, and for formatting the media which is called rebuilding in the Kinefinity system. Tapping the media button twice quickly will either activate or deactivate the media. In order to be able to rebuild or format the media, it needs to be deactivated first. The power button brings up a shutdown confirmation. While tapping it twice, we'll bypass the confirmation and shut the camera down. On the side grip, there is a suspend mode button. Pressing this button once brings up a confirmation message, which allows you to place the camera in suspend mode. In this mode, the camera is partially shut off but still uses a small amount of power, allowing it to turn back on much faster, which is done by pressing the power button. The camera body's side screen remains on in suspend mode. To change media, first make sure that the media in the camera is deactivated. Then, lift the red safety and pull the SSD out. When you put a new media card in, it will need to be rebuilt, also known as formatting. Make sure to reformat cards only in the camera and not on a computer. The Mavo LF has the great advantage that it can use off-the-shelf 2.5-inch SSDs that are thin and fast enough like this Samsung 860 EVO. Do be careful with third-party SSDs, however, because some protruding metal parts can break the media door on the camera. You can avoid this issue by covering sharp edges and screw mounts with tape. If you plan to back up your footage on a Mac, you should choose to format the media in HFS mode, which is the default. For Windows machines, choose to format the media in NTFS mode. If you're unsure, NTFS is also readable on recent Macs, but in read-only mode. When you've finished shooting, you can use a USB 3 SSD reader or a third-party alternative to connect the media to a computer and back it up. It's best practice to connect the media to the reader first, followed by connecting the USB cable to the computer. When you're finished, safely eject or dismount the media before disconnecting it. This is what the file structure of the Mavo Media Card looks like. There is a folder for each clip you've shot, named in progressive number order. Within the folder is the video file, MOV or CDNG, the LUT files used for monitoring, which is very convenient for using LUTs while editing, a snapshot image file with the first frame of the clip in half resolution, a slate text file with the camera's metadata like shutter speed, ISO, and so on. Audio is always recorded by the Mavo, even when shooting off speed. If you shoot with both the project and sensor frame rates set the same, audio will be embedded in your QuickTime MOV file. Otherwise, if you shoot off speed or in cinema DNG format, audio is saved in separate WAV files. Otherwise, if you shoot off speed or in cinema DNG format, audio is saved in separate WAV files. That's all for today. More in-depth tips and tutorials with and about Kinefinity are just around the corner. So be sure to like the videos and subscribe to our channel. If you have a request for a specific tutorial, please tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you next time.